Thank you so much, um, Barbara, for the introduction. It's such an honor to be introduced by you. Um, you're one of the people I can blame for me uh, going so uh, far, you know, as far as I have uh, in graphic design, you really uh, trusted what you saw of my portfolio, which was really a bunch of sketches, you know, hand uh, drawn uh, litter forms and sketches for paintings and collages. Um, and in the work that I'm going to show today, there's still some remnant of that. I still really believe in the idea of, um, of making by hand. I still believe in the idea of portraiture and I really believe in uh, materiality and, and process. All designers are, are working through process and all arts are working through process. Uh, but I also um, sort of uh, draw many more through lines between uh, the modes of production, uh, the modes of presentation and also the spaces that the work can live in. Um, this is an image uh, from the, my solo show at Printed Matter that opened last year in May. And um, I really wanted to present uh, this, uh, sort of anchor my presentation around this show because there's so many um, people, you know, gathered to watch this who are supporters of mine, uh, who've really watched my trajectory, but haven't been able to uh, see some of the presentations I've done uh, in exhibitions, um, you know, in museums and galleries, and haven't been able to attend um, talks. And I think today's so special. Um, I imagined myself going to New York to Cooper Union to present on the stage there. Um, and now this is really being broadcasted to a broad audience. And um, I'm so excited to share this uh, project because it's really a culmination of a lot of the work that I've been um, doing over the past um, seven years. I'm going to read a passage from a book that uh, uh, Tinashe Mushakawano and I put out as our um, collaborative project Black Chalk and Co. Uh, we produced our first significant volume that came out uh, the week that my show was opening at Printed Matter and the book is called Some Writers Can Give You Two Heartbeats. Um, I'm going to read a quote from Yvonne Vera uh, and um, it's in our book which is also in the image there. I would not write if, it if I weren't in search of beauty, if I was doing it only to advance a cause. I care deeply about my subjects but I want to be consumed by figures of beauty, by story and character. It must be about perfection, like a basket maker or a weaver or a hair platter. You are aware of what you are trying to accomplish from the first sentence. I don't write much, um, but I do produce uh, images and I really believe in developing a strong visual vocabulary. Um, when I got to Yale, I was really um, trying to figure out what it meant to be making work so far away from home. It was my first time living away from my home country, Zimbabwe. And I started to uh, think about the connections that the Black community in the U.S. had with the Black community back home in other centers, uh, thinking about the African diaspora. I would go to the library in search of books um, and started to find a lot of volumes that were produced in the 70s and 80s that were either produced in Africa or produced in the US and really kind of around the time of the Black is Beautiful movement. I was also arriving in the US um, during the time of uh, the sort of natural hair movement really taking hold of um, Black America and uh, this had not yet really taken root in my uh, country. So it was quite uh, interesting to think about ways in which we were thinking about images of blackness, presentation, a hierarchy of aesthetics um, uh, across uh, different spaces, looking at one another for kind of an affirmative um, image, you know, outside of what we were holding, what, what we were holding ourselves to and uh, thinking about how we are perceived and what we can do to try to um, sort of an aspirational, an aspirational projection uh, through uh, looking at kin in another space. This uh, page in uh, the book, the, the Traditional Hairstyles for Black Women, is a huge inspiration source for me. Um, it was something that really allowed me to understand that I could participate in publication design, that I could have a stake in thinking about typography, I love this hairstyle on the page, all the arcs and curves, uh, what holds it together. I love that it is based on a tradition that continues to be replicated over time. Um, this uh, hairstyle is printed onto the page. Or it's really, you know, drawn in, but for me, it's, it's printed onto the page, it's in black ink. It is the text, it is holding content, it is a message. 
I really like to think about ways in which things from our cultures are also akin to um, forms of uh, other fo forms that m might uh, in, within the academy or within the discipline seem like the, the fundamental ways to communicate, but there's a plethora of ways that we communicate through all of our cultures. And I really try to foreground that in my work and using African hair braiding is just the beginning of that investigation and also an excuse to test out um, uh, and prove uh, this uh, feeling that I have, or this not feeling, but really uh, this, uh, it's really, yeah, I really, I know that this is true, that we can make these statements and we've been making statements and communicating with each other um, through so many modalities. And I'm very interested in continuing to push those things forward even as I work as a graphic designer. Um, this is my bookshelf in my office at VCU in Richmond. I'm so grateful to Silas Monroe for presenting on what's happening with the monuments here. Um, and I just wanted to kind of bring you again back into the space um, of Richmond and just sort of get to know me a little bit more. Right now you're in my home and I'm speaking to you from, from there. And um, also for you to get a sense of the things that inform the practice. I really love what Julian did with bringing us all these references. And um, it's so wonderful to think about the context that the work uh, comes from. I always think about the context that I come from in terms of my own identity and the contexts and spaces that my work moves through and lives in and how that informs or creates a sharp contrast with the work. Um, here on the shelf, you can see uh, Sakima Fundipa's African Alphabets. This book is really on my bookshelf. Students are borrowing it very often uh, because it's really essential that we now uh, produce projects projects very much like what Osmond Chuma presented, uh, projects that are thinking about messaging that really reflect our cultures, whether it is historic or contemporary, we're continuously evolving the ways that we think about ourselves, narrate, um, and also document ourselves. And so I really uh, try to lend this book out as often as possible and students really want it because it gives them a way to think about and frame uh, their own cultural context and, and build their own projects that are related to their Vietnamese or Chinese um, uh, heritage and all, all other kinds of uh, backgrounds. This book by McKinney, for McKinney Thomas um, by, that was produced by Aperture uh, was uh, designed by Andrew Sloat and my collaborator Julian Novich and I got to typeset and um, arrange the images for an interview that is in here. I really love McKinney's um, work and you know just like how she thinks about uh, the black body, uh, how she thinks about pulling references, patterns together to think about a time, a moment as another uh, form of visual vocabulary and being drawn to pattern. Um, a really uh, wonderful book uh, by Deborah Willis, uh, you know, the foremost uh, scholar on photography, Black American scholar here in the United States. Uh, such a, a wonderful volume and uh, a gift from my uh, colleague who's a writer, Kevin Simmons. In my uh, research and work and teaching, I'm continuing to pull together academic texts, uh, objects from uh, my life. Um, I'm pulling together experiences that I have um, you know, as I move through different spaces and I'm thinking about design technology and um, different materials uh, to pull towards the work to really establish meaning. All the objects that you see on the shelves with the, my collection of books and my stationery are produced um, are reproductions of actual African hair braiding, uh, Af Africa, so black beauty supply store products and they're cast in uh, black wax, black resin and black concrete. Um, we're inside uh, the show at Printed Matter now, and I really wanted this uh, moment to be uh, a way for me to make sense of what I was collecting, uh, not just books, but also homes, what I was making and, and where all of this work could go. I really think about juxtaposition and arrangement. Uh, this idea, everything is where it is expected, uh, comes from another uh, story that Yvonne Vera writes, where she's describing a hairstyle uh, that is perfectly, perfectly done. Every braid in place, all of the lines cut evenly, tension perfect. Um, I think so much about, uh, you know, uh, black production, you know, how much genius is embedded in their engineering mathematics code. Um, and, uh, and I often hear uh, within other communities, sometimes in the design community, 
uh, references that, that uh, make it seem as if work from the continent and the black diaspora is rough or coarse or unrefined or, or that we don't want to think about uh, things that are regimented or organized and that we don't see a hierarchy. And that's really you know, contrary to the, to the truth. There's so much structure and my work really follows that. Um, uh, this uh, publication, the African Hair Breeding Salon Reader, was a place uh, that I brought together so many uh, other references, uh, media, um, objects of beauty, uh, things that were akin to making a uh, publication and also uh, to making hair. Uh, one of the most important things uh, within this um, this uh, publication was looking at uh, media, uh, looking at films. So I looked at Black American films like Coming to America. Um, this is a, a piece uh, that's not part of the film, but is something that also reminds me of that connection. Black immigrants coming to the U.S. Uh, finding themselves in that space and what kind of work we do um, when, we, when we move um, in, into the U.S. Um, in Coming to America, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall are pictured in uh, New York, I think they're in Harlem. Um, and his uh, father comes uh, to look for his son that has run away um, and goes to look for him in this barbershop. I think that's also quite uh, significant. A lot of my work um, started with interest in thinking about African hair braiding, black hair aesthetics, and the way it could relate to graphic design came out of me going to hair salons with my cousin Andrea in Harlem, um, going to black uh, uh, hair care stores um, in the UK, finding them back in the US. Um, it really became a space for me to find kinship. I really felt at home there. I love the way that within the space of these um, these uh, business cards, you start to see the identities also conflating and coming together. The backdrop is an American flag. Uh, there is African unmistakably printed there, a West African name printed. I'm thinking a lot about uh, what hair has to do with identity building. I'm thinking a lot about hair and presentation and hierarchy and meaning. Uh, but I think that those things also appear when we're thinking about typography, when we're typesetting. What feeling do we want the characters, the characters to have? Um, what should be most prominent? What should feel more lively? Um, this, uh, these stills here are from Set It Off very, very amazing uh, film that came out in the 90s. I look at these films because they really helped me to uh, uh, sort of establish my idea of black hair aesthetics uh, when I was a teenager growing up in Zim, actually a preteen, my, my older sisters were teenagers, so I'd be watching along with them and they're very cool friends. Um, I started to take out the characters from those um, posters and think about what archetypes were being presented through these different hairstyles, what they meant, um, and just what the juxtapositions uh, did. Within uh, the films, there are often prominent um, moments where we see black hair care um, in action um, and thinking about you know, what, that, what, what importance that holds in our community. Oftentimes I'm making uh, collages and images that really sort of push that uh, image of us, you know, back out uh, into spaces. I think about the places that are ours, the things that are, are solely ours, that when other people see them or perceive them, they can, see, they can read them from the surface, but there's so much cultural meaning embedded in them that you have to have gone through those processes. Um, you have to be, you know, you have to be kin to know uh, the meaning, to know the stress, the trauma, the beauty, to have memory and for there to be other deeper uh, levels of reading. I'm thinking a lot about um, uh, handwritten text. I'm also thinking a lot about script um, and how these uh, things, how these forms can be seen uh, within spaces of blackness. Um, oftentimes things like scripts, certain kinds of visual signifiers and ornaments are, are, are taught to us as if they're European and separate from us, but we've been involved with all of those uh, things through slavery, through colonialism, through being immigrants. We've touched them, we've, we've made them, we've constructed them. Um, I also think about where those form rhymes happen and how I can play with those things because my identity is formed not just uh, out of Zimbabwe, you know, from a Kasa and Shana background. My identity is totally, you know, also uh, formed by the colonial um, the colonial experience and myself being uh, supposedly post-colonial and a, a black African immigrant working in the United States. 
I think about you know the spaces that I've moved, and I and I love to see these tumbleweave in the street because it reminds me wherever I'm going: Berlin, Harare, South Africa, or uh, well, Johannesburg, if I'm using cities, um, uh, that there is another black person, usually another black woman, because of uh, what the what the extensions are like. But anyone could wear them if they wanted to. Um, you know, another black person has moved through that space. Again, thinking about locating kin. Uh, when I think about uh, some of the work I've made, I'm really also thinking about what it is that I miss uh, from home, the sounds that we make when we're speaking, things that I've had to sometimes train out of my uh, vocabulary uh, when I was in graduate school or starting out in um, in uh, New York. And I, I, I've, I've allowed myself to bring those things back. You know, it's been really wonderful to meet a group of Zimbabwean practitioners that are also um, living and working in the US and to be able to, to enunciate oneself and code switch um, in these ways is, is just so beautiful. I've been thinking about what the tumbleweave and the community could do together. I've been thinking about those diff different visual vocabularies and layers um, as I'm working. I'm not only thinking about uh, what we are seeing in terms of visual signifiers, but I'm also thinking about the process. Something about hair braiding is that it takes time. It also takes resources. There's a lot of different things that come into play. So I think about tools and process, homes, hair oils, time. Um, so within the work that I'm making, I'm also privileging uh, these uh, notions of focus on production. Uh, this piece was inspired uh, by um, myself being in Richmond, Virginia. It's a tiling poster. Um, I like to do a lot of work that is tiled, it's modules. Uh, that poster is really based on the idea of chain links, the idea of slavery, or maybe notions of being able to break those chains, being able to take the modules apart or putting them back together. Um, I also think about chains as, as ornaments and maybe there's a way to kind of uh, think about you know, sort of hold uh, these two ideas and, and amplify them in different ways. I really love doing things with my hands. I don't only think about additive processes in making, I think about productive processes. Uh, this is Ray Carlson, my really phenomenal studio assistant who's been helping me uh, develop um, a whole sort of system of characters based around um, the hair braiding work. I think about the digital, digital being canned, digital also being uh, using other kind of technology. This is a um, program uh, that is uh, helping to send uh, information from a vector image that we use to a CNC router. Um, these two CNC routers were working on two different floors. They ran both for eight hours at the amazing help of two um, colleagues uh, here at VCU. Um, and, I, and I really wanted to think about how could I uh, continue to build on this idea of reductive making. How can I think about pattern repetition? I'm very invested in a practice of printmaking. Um, so I was making, uh, fabricating uh, these uh, wood blocks to be able to um, actually uh, do letter press um, and those posts that you saw uh, hanging on the wooden printed matter uh, all uh, done um, in the letter press studio here at UC. The process production effort, it takes a lot of time to break. Here you see the objects uh, in amongst the other work. Um, they also become a piece in themselves. Um, I love the objects also that I collect. I have a huge collection of poems. Um, started off from when I was in the UK with my older sister. She bought me a set of black plastic combs, similar to the ones that we used to use um, as a family at home. This gesture, the black power fist, that is language. It's a statement, um, no type needed. Though on these combs, they are actually names uh, there's a name Eden on one of them, and I can't, and I think I can't remember the name on the other poem. But I often think about that—that that these poems can could be personified, that these poems could be a prompt. Here again, my own tumbleweave that I'm constructing, thinking about base shapes and what I could do um, to uh, construct other messages that are prompts. What are things that I want to talk about with the black community around me? I'm also thinking about uh, language that has to do with hair and has to do with other kinds of uh, situations right now with everything that's going on and, and, and being on my own. 
I'm thinking about my emotional state and so sort of what does it mean to be undone? You know, oftentimes I think, you know, about, you know, being in knots. Sometimes I, I've got another a gift that I've made with these uh, characters that continue to shift and morph um, that says, okay, and just think about different states. I really love the idea of variable characters um, and that you can have alternates. I mean, so I'm really sort of allowing myself to build those things um, in a very analog way and, and we're digitizing uh, this also um, with Ray. Um, this is a music video that uh, is hosted on a website uh, that I've just uh, created. I actually took a coding class for the, well, I took two in grad school, but didn't code anything. I had a lot of support and I, I'm confident enough now to really delve into it. I really like the idea of writing, writing code and those strings of, 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 of characters the idea of commands, just like grading, there's instructions, there's a re repetitive pattern, there's a process uh, that's really regimented and structured. But if you understand the structure, then you can do anything. So I've made this website, which is a conversation between myself and Tinashe Moshakawanu, um, taking two books uh, in African literature. One is by Binyawanga Wanaina, it's called One Day I'll Write About This Place. And the other one is The Hairdresser of Harare, uh, written by Tindai Huchu, a Zimbabwean author. Um, the book looks at the idea of gender. It places the main protagonists in hair salons, um, and then two, two men uh, as hair, one as a hairdresser and the other as the son of a hairdresser, and looks at the salon from their perspective. I really like, uh, you know, thinking about who is in that space and what narratives are overly represented and how, what we can do to shift the lens. Also, to think about how within a space like Zimbabwe, queer men find refuge and can be safe in, th in those communities within the hairdressing community where they might not be very safe outside. Um, when you're reading uh, this, uh, this conversation, which is actually something we did for publication in, in South Africa, Chimurenga, um, uh, they're based out of Cape Town, they're amazing colleagues of Black Chalk. Um, I decided to interweave these uh, music videos that also show us this idea of black hair aesthetic again thinking about how we are continuing to project and reinforce these values that we have within our community these archetypes uh, these uh, design standards um, and where they show up in film in in, in music video how and why um, this is one of my favorite songs of the moment uh, by coffee seeing hair braiding being done on the street somebody sitting on the ground, sometimes someone sitting between another person's legs, this idea of the, the intimate connection. Um, another part of the investigation, this is me coming to the end, uh, will be looking at uh, the typography on the actual business cards. But this has never been my intention to kind of break this down in a way to necessarily uh, interrogate the, the vernacular. I think it's so wonderful to see this very rich vocabulary on the cards. We also see it's very similar typefaces and, and, and um, uh, gestures like the outer glows here. Um, on hip hop posters, dance hall posters. And so really thinking about this uh, kind of typographic language or graphic language that we see circulating amongst black communities. And I think that, you know, I really enjoy it and I love it, but I'm not really wanting to uh, interrogate it, to co-opt it. Um, my work is really thinking about the, the position of the hair braider and those techniques, those processes, that time and labor, and thinking about myself as a as a designer whose, whose practice is akin to that, having a, a sort of, client-based uh, relationship with clients and uh, think about commissions. Um, and so the project continues. Um, I've built out about five different character sets uh, with these uh, hair braided uh, forms and really thinking about where the language needs to go. What kind of messages am I going to write uh, with this uh, experimental uh, lettering? And um, I'm continuing to braid at home for practice and just getting involved in the world and doing the actual thing and investing in that continues to inform uh, the visual work that I make. Thank you.